All natives were forced to go to church. Colonization, right? We're on a journey to the scene of a crime. I'm with Clarence Louie, the longtime chief of the Osoyoos Indian Band. He's been down this road in BC Southern Okanagan many times, as the history of the Catholic Church here weighs heavily on him. I mean, I'm pissed at the church. I got no, I got no respect for the church. That cross has done so much damage. I mean, caused so much grief and killed so many people, not just Native people. There's something he wants to show us. Just the building itself, I'm not talking about the religion or the, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Or the symbolism of that. It's just an old historic building. This is an amazing sight yeah, here. These are big horn sheep. Past the rolling hills of sagebrush and sheep. This is the one that got burnt down. Oh my goodness. It looks fresh. We come to a clearing. This is what's left of the historic St. Gregory's Catholic Church. Charred rubble bits of scrap metal, and the cement staircase that once led to the front door. You've walked up these steps a few times as a child? Yeah, I didn't like it. We were forced to come in here. We were heathens, right? We were savages. We had to come in here and have the white, white man save our souls. That's what we were taught. Built in 1915, this historic church once stood as a gathering place. The church bells would ring on Sundays. There were potluck dinners and celebrations here. But in the summer of 2021, it was burned to the ground. So when I got the call, I wasn't upset. I wasn't teary-eyed or anything. I was upset that some res punks um, did arson. Whoever did it didn't ask for permission from the rest of the community or the chief and council. They did it under the cover of darkness, and I call that arson. Never found out who did it. Nobody knows who did it. We can guess. I don't think white people came here and burnt this down. I'll just make sure nothing lights on fire. In the early hours of the morning, members of the Penticton Indian Band spotted flames. It was the second church to burn that night. This one in Penticton, just a one hour drive away, was the first. Who's to say, you know, there, there will not be other similar types of incidents? This is where it all started. June 22nd, 2021. In the dark of night, Sacred Heart Church in Penticton went up in flames. Just a few hours later, the church in Osoyoos was burned. Then later that week, two more churches in the South Okanagan destroyed by fire. And that was just the start of a series of church fires that have destroyed historic structures right across Canada. We examined media reports, followed up with police, fire, and local authorities. We checked court records to learn the circumstances in each case. Based on our investigation, we found 33 churches in Canada which had been fully lost to fire since May 2021. More than double the number from the previous two years, and only two were ruled accidental. Nine of the fires led to arson charges, 12 people in total. At least six are from the indigenous communities where the churches were burned. Five have yet to face trial. A local youth was convicted in this fire on the Kahiwan Cree Nation in Alberta. In other cases, such as this one in Surrey, BC, the arsons were attributed to mental health issues. The RCMP says it found nothing to link any of the fires. The surge in church fires began following the discovery of potential unmarked graves on the site of the former Kamloops Residential School. The news stirred up long simmering anger and resentment with the church, particularly in the indigenous community. Finding these uh, unidentified graves, unidentified bodies in the ground there, of course the natives are going to be pissed off. Some punks take, you know, they, they go out and do stupid things. I can understand why they did it, but I still don't support it. No matter if this is just a building, it's something that means to everybody in this village. Initially, the churches set ablaze were on indigenous lands. Churches on fire are completely destroyed. Smaller, sometimes unused, often in remote areas. But that summer, fires erupted in churches big and small throughout Canada. 
Manitoba, Saskatchewan, then Alberta in a place where the Catholic faith runs deep. Saint Jean Baptiste Church was an iconic structure in Morinville, Alberta, a town of 10,000, a third of them Catholic. Just before Canada Day 2021, the 117 year old landmark went up in flames in the middle of the night, igniting outrage. Burning down of faith communities, targeting them with this, these acts of violence and intimidation is not reconciliation. It's not the way forward. It is a dangerous and violent criminal act. So this is from the West version. Ron Cust is a former fire chief and fire investigator. Now he's heading the community's efforts to replace the historic church. The three days when I was on site working with the official investigators, the bishop was on site with Father and we were talking about, okay, um, retrieve the bells so we could potentially use them or send them away to be recast. So we were able to retrieve what we could, but the structure had burnt so hot and so intense that I couldn't even find a piece of the a pew. Nor could they find an official cause. The fire remains suspicious. No suspects, no arrests, just this big empty lot where the church once stood. At the University of Alberta in Edmonton, Paulina Johnson has been looking into the church fires and why they're happening. I think for many Indigenous peoples, it gives them a voice because for the longest time, Canada hasn't really actually acknowledged us. I am Dr. Paulina Johnson, and I am the auntie is in. She's an assistant professor and podcaster. Her work is a deep dive into the injustices faced by Indigenous people and how some fight back. The church fires, they're much more than just arson. It's a greater symbolic kind of narrative of Canada and Canada's relationship to Indigenous peoples, which is really lacking. It's on fire because no one's really addressing the truth of what Indigenous peoples are facing. So it, it leads to a larger conversation that needs to be had. Back in Morinville, faith remains strong. Parishioners mourned the loss of their church. Now they just want to move on without pointing fingers. We don't know how the incident started and we don't know who is a part of starting that. And so therefore, why would we single out one part of, of a community and target them for it? The goal is to rebuild a traditional church and retake its place in the main street of the community, to bring back the bells, which were heard through the town for more than a century. You don't go around and burn stuff down. There's other ways to display your anger and emotions. On the Asoyus Indian Band, there is no such effort to rebuild. What now with this site? It's, uh, it, it, it looks relatively untouched. All we're probably gonna do one of these days is get rid of all these ashes and all this debris here and just leave it at that. Chances of, of us building another church when there's only three to five churchgoers in this whole community, that, that's not gonna happen. And even if we did build it, the res punks would come and burn it down again probably.